Hey everybody, I'm Dan Giusti. Today I'm being challenged to prepare three delicious and affordable dishes using frozen puff pastry. We'll be using frozen puff pastry to make three delicious dishes, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, all for less than $3 a plate. Puff pastry is a very unique product. This steam that builds up in between the layers of the flour and water dough create these puffs, which creates an amazing texture. From a flavor perspective, it can go either savory or sweet. Being able to take this out of the freezer and the amount of time it takes to thaw and you're ready to go, you're saving yourself hours of time. Let's get started with our first recipe and that is breakfast. Today we're gonna to be making a pineapple coconut breakfast strudel using our frozen puff pastry. So traditionally a strudel is not made with puff pastry, but a very, very, very thin dough that is then stuffed with some kind of filling. And then when it's baked, you get these really thin, crisp layers. Instead of making that thin, thin, thin dough, we're gonna be using our frozen puff pastry to get the same effect. When I was testing out this recipe, it did give me this kind of rush of nostalgia because it really looks just like a toaster strudel. So the first step for the breakfast strudel is to drain our pineapple. So we're gonna be using crushed pineapple for this dish. Works super well because it's broken down into these small pieces already. It's not super, super sweet. Buying the canned pineapple, especially this quantity, is gonna save you some money. You don't need a whole pineapple. Now this box has been sitting out for a little bit. So this dough inside will be thawed to a certain extent. If you don't thaw the puff pastry and then you go to use it, it's really just not gonna cook evenly at all. We need to cut our pieces. We're gonna go ahead and just cut it in half. When cutting something like a dough, probably the, the more narrow the blade, the better. Pizza cutter would be great if you have one. We have this flour here. It's really doing nothing for us. We also don't want this flour inside our strudel. If you are doing anything where you're gonna stick two pieces of dough together, having that flour in between uh, could prohibit that. Just using a spoon, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fill these. It's moist enough so when you eat it, it's gonna be juicy and it's not gonna be this dry thing but it's not too wet as to kind of disrupt the flakiness of the pastry itself. But you'll notice I'm keeping an area around the edge and we need that area to seal. Our butter is melted, smallest amount. You can even really use water to do this part. I'm just using butter because it will enhance the flavor of the dish overall. I'm gonna go ahead and top these now. This side has less flour on it, so I'm gonna put that in the inside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and seal these. These will expand a bit outward a touch, so when we go to bake them, we will make sure they're spaced out. We're all sealed up here. One more brush to get any excess off. And then we're gonna use our melted butter again. Of course, the butter will give a lot of flavor uh, to this, but it will help brown the tops so you get this really nice golden brown color. We're gonna actually put holes in these. So what the holes are gonna do is it's gonna allow some of the steam uh, from the filling to escape. Uh, letting the moisture escape as well will promote kind of the crispiness and the flakiness of the pastries. We're gonna go ahead and pop these in a 400 degree oven. They should take in the vicinity of 15 to 20 minutes. While they bake, we wanna toast our coconut. So we're gonna be using unsweetened coconut flakes. I like the texture of them. I think they're a little crunchier, crispier. By toasting it, we're gonna kinda heat up those oils, kinda wake it up again, liven it up. You can start to really just see it browning. That's why I like to do it on the stovetop because you can just watch it and when it's done, take it off. Once you're done toasting, get it out of this pan so it stops the toasting, otherwise you could end up burning it. Some of you might be thinking, wow, that's a small bowl. You know what? I'm thinking the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and check on our strudels. They should be almost done. They've been in there for about 15 minutes or so. Our Breakfast strudels are looking good. They've puffed up a bit, they got nice and brown. We are gonna use sweetened condensed milk. For me, this is like icing in a can. It's inexpensive. I think it's a great thing to buy for this preparation. There is a good amount of pastry, so we wanna add some sweetness, we wanna add a bit of moisture, so it's this really nice, delicious bite, and we want it to look like a toaster strudel. We are on a tray, so we're gonna just, in a very healthy way, sprinkle coconut on here. Some of it's not gonna stick, it's fine. And there you have it. Four portions of the delicious pineapple coconut breakfast strudel coming out to $5.86, which is $1.47 per portion. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and taste this. You can hear the flakiness, you can see the flakiness. Mm, delicious. 
So I feel like when you first bite into it, you're getting more of that pineapple flavor and then you start to taste more coconut after the fact. And then the whole thing really gets brought together with the sweet and condensed milk because it provides moisture, it provides the sweetness. In the end, I think this recipe shows you a really quick, inexpensive and easy way to make a professional looking and tasting pastry at home. All right, it is lunchtime, and for lunch, we're gonna be preparing a vegetable egg in a hole. So we're essentially going to make kind of like a vegetable tart, if you will, with the puff pastry, and we're gonna cut out a hole in the middle, drop an egg in, and finish baking that tart in the oven so the egg sets up nice, and then we're gonna top it with a light salad of frisee. By using the puff pastry here, instead of, say, just a regular piece of bread, you get this flakiness, you get this pastry that's just really on a different level than your standard piece of bread. We have our puff pastry out thawing. In the meantime, we are going to cut our vegetables. We are going to be using yellow squash, zucchini, and tomatoes. Could you use other vegetables for this? Of course you could. Goal would be though that your puff pastry is gonna take like 15 to 20 minutes to cook, so we want vegetables that will cook in a similar time. So we will season these now. We're using olive oil. Not only is the oil there for flavor, but it is there to conduct the heat. Oil can get to a higher temperature than water can, the water that's present inside of these vegetables. Therefore, it conducts the heat at a higher temperature, and therefore, they will get roasted, and that's what we want to happen. And the way we're gonna season them with garlic is I'm just taking a whole clove here. The salt will kind of be abrasive and kind of take some of the oils out of the garlic. It will flavor these vegetables quite nicely, and then you can just take it out. So we're being gentle here as to not break these up. So we are ready to assemble our tart now for our vegetable egg and hole. We're gonna have a hole in the middle with an egg in the middle, so we want something that's a little wider, more square, cut down this line. And then I have a bit of water here, and I'm just gonna use the water on the edge, like glue. And I'm just gonna kinda press it down as to make one piece versus two, and then cut. So I want there to be a little bit of kind of a hangover on the vegetables but primarily want to keep them on the puff pastry itself. So I'm just gonna alternate colors because that looks nice. We do need to maintain some space in the middle for the egg, so we are keeping things a little further out. So we're ready to go. Our oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and pop this in. These are looking great. So the center has risen up a bit. Uh, vegetables have really started to roast, but they're not like kind of super crispy chips. They maintain their integrity. I'm using this knife to kind of take out the center part of the puff pastry. And then we're gonna drop an egg right in there and go back into the oven. There's no real technique to this outside of just having a knife that's thin and sharp. There we go. All right, so we are set to put these eggs in here. It kind of run a little bit when you first crack it, which is fine. We're gonna season the egg. We're not seasoning everywhere now because we've already seasoned the vegetables. So we're putting these in the oven at the broiler setting. And we just want the heat to be direct onto the eggs versus kind of just ambient heat. So, so this is the final stage of the cooking process. We're gonna get our salad ready to go. For our salad, uh, I've chosen to use frisee. It is slightly on the bitter side, but it's really crunchy and kind of juicy. And we're gonna make this very like slightly acidic salad to cut through the richness of the pastry and the egg. I am going to take some chives and we're just gonna cut these into larger pieces. Basil is one of those herbs. Uh, if you ate a whole basil leaf in a bite while eating this salad, it would be very strong and overpowering. So we're gonna take just a couple leaves here. I'm making a very simple vinaigrette of just olive oil and red wine vinegar, salt, and then the pepper. So I'm just gonna kind of mix this around. Salad is ready to go. I'm gonna go check on the egg in a hole, and we should be ready to finish the dish off. Our vegetable egg in a hole, I guess it would be egg in a holes. I don't really know. They're looking good. The white is cooked, the yolk still soft. I think in this scenario, you have this like pastry that's kind of nice and dry and flaky to really absorb the yolk, so I think it makes a lot of sense to keep it soft. And the vegetables we've taken pretty far. All right, there you have it. Four portions of vegetable egg in a hole coming out to $10.86. And that is $2.72 a portion. All right, it is time to taste our vegetable egg in the hole. It's looking delicious. See what I'm working with? Super delicious. 
So you get a whole bunch of different textures here. Underneath, the pastry has gotten pretty crispy. Because we kept the vegetables thick, they still have some juiciness as well in the middle, especially where they're overlapping. And then the salad is just crunchy and fresh. And for dinner, we're going to be preparing a chicken and mushroom pocket utilizing our frozen puff pastry. It's like a hot pocket. I was also inspired by these dishes referred to as Wellington. You sometimes see beef Wellington. The puff pastry works for this dish in a variety of ways. The outside will kind of get this nice flaky crust. In the inside, the pastry itself will kind of absorb a lot of the sauce, which makes it for delicious eating once you get into it. So we're gonna get started with the mushroom component of the filling. We wanna just make sure we're cutting them in a way that they're not super, super thin, so they just kinda turn to nothing. Stems on these mushrooms are good to go. There are certain mushrooms where you might wanna remove the stem, and how do you know? Feel the flesh of the cap, it's kind of soft, and then you feel the stem, it's like wood. That would be an indication that you wouldn't really wanna use those stems. So I'm pan roasting here. You wanna make sure you have enough surface areas. This heat is at, on high right now. We are not going to season these mushrooms. Reason being is the moment I put salt on these mushrooms, it will draw a ton of moisture, and then it will be very difficult at that time to roast the mushrooms. They'll just kind of steam. And then just let it go a little bit. Let it do its thing. Why it does its thing, we're gonna cut some onions. We just wanna cut it so it's not huge chunks. We're gonna add some garlic to our mix. So when it comes to these things, I would refer to them as like aromatics. You can add as little as you want. You could change it up a little bit. Once you get this initial water out of the mushrooms, they really will hold up. They're not gonna like take on all this moisture and get flabby again. So I'm gonna turn the heat down a touch because we're gonna add our onions and garlic. We don't really wanna roast these. We just wanna soften them while seasoning and this will promote them to sweat. We'll let this go a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cream. So the cream here is really gonna produce a sauce for us because we can reduce this cream down and it will take on a much thicker texture. Bubbles would be an indication of something simmering, so we're good with those bubbles. I'm going to cut the parsley. I'm gonna use everything, uh, stem and leaf. When you drag your utensil through this, you can see that it's garnered a lot of thickness. And this is gonna get very thick as it cools down that will make it very easy for us to stuff our pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the fridge for now. We have boneless, skinless chicken thighs. First thing is we're gonna season the chicken, keeping in mind the seasoning of everything else. Mushroom mix is cold. Uh, I do feel that the parsley kind of cuts the richness of this filling. I'm determined to actually get all of this filling into here. Just gotta trust the process, put a little more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put butter just on the edges. I'm gonna just stretch it a little more. I like using the fork to seal it. I think it does a good job of sealing it. And you can see this thing is pretty intense in size. Because once you put them in the oven and they start to bake, if it's not sealed, they come apart. At that point, it's gonna be hard to reseal it. So these are hot pockets, you know what I'm saying? These things are gonna be hot. We're gonna finish these with just a touch of butter. This is for color. If you scored this, what would basically happen is everything would bubble over. We are using the puff pastry as a different function, really to encapsulate this filling. And we don't really want anything to escape. We wanna keep everything inside. All right, so we're gonna pop these in the oven at about 350 degrees for approximately 20 minutes or until we have a nice golden brown crust. Our Pockets are looking good. They tempt at about 175 degrees internally. With chicken thighs, you could take them even further if you want to. We have regular spinach, actually beautiful looking stuff. We're gonna go ahead and take the, the stems off here. Now you might say that looks like a good amount of spinach, but if you've ever cooked spinach, you know this spinach will literally shrink down to nothing. We're gonna saute the spinach, so this is gonna be a quick process. I'm gonna season it right off the bat as well. The seasoning will draw out some of the moisture and will kind of promote the uh, cooking of the spinach. It's larger leaves of spinach have a nice, this like green, almost mineral note to them. So you see it just shrinking and shrinking. The leaf, it's crumpled, it's dark green, it's ready to go. I have a tray here with a paper towel. We're gonna put this right onto that to ensure that extra moisture ends up on this paper towel. Our pockets have been sitting out of the oven for about 10 minutes, so they're no longer molten hot in the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these and plate it up. If you try to cut this when it's like super hot, it is gonna be very difficult to handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut this into fourths. 
So when you get into here, straight away, you can see the roasted mushrooms, you can see the parsley, that's nice, you can see the sauce. Mm. There you have it, four portions of a chicken and mushroom pocket for $11.84, coming out to $2.96 per portion. Time to taste. So this looks great, looks substantial. Mm. So good. Super tender, super juicy, very easy to eat. The roasted mushrooms, in certain bites are really kind of like the most flavorful part of the dish. And then the spinach is just there in a great way to complement the whole dish to kind of bring it together. So there you have it, frozen puff pastry from your everyday supermarket transformed into three delicious dishes, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Not only is frozen puff pastry inexpensive and readily available, it makes it super easy to create delicious dishes that not only look like they were prepared by a professional chef, but also taste like it.